page 12 and 13, book 1A of the All-in-One Approach. Here we have a wonderful piece called Varakas. This was written by Kevin Olson, a terrific piece for rests in between some of the measures. Oh my goodness. One, two, So there are two lines to this wonderful piece and there's a repeat sign because there are two great verses. So the practice steps, there's always practice steps so our students can be really great players. Clap and count out loud and whisper the rest. And you know, I think I would add in, after they clap it, I would actually have them tap it, either on their thighs or on the fallboard. Because some students will get confused between, as you know, the right and the left hand notes, like this. One, two, three, four, one. They might be thinking, oh my gosh, which hand is that? Oh, it's my left hand. Back to my right hand. One, two, left hand, right hand. Still the right hand. And then together, Together, two, three, four, right? And you notice that I circled the octaves, right? So it's a very good way to review what they learn in the preparatory level about those intervals of octaves, that they're eight notes apart from each other. All right, so we can have the students play those two octaves, have them do that several times until you really think that they're very comfortable with it. You know, lots of times I ask on a scale from one to five, with five, which five meaning you are the most comfortable. What number are you? And some students will say, oh, I'm a five. I, that's really simple. Or you can say, well, I feel like that's a three. Okay, well then let's do that five more times. And then there's just a little bit of a tidbit of reinforcement in technique. Up at the top of the page, it says, notice your eight hills, right? So have them notice those nice finger knuckles that are high and forming a wonderful bridge. Did you count the quarter rests? Was what the musicality girl asked the students afterwards. The next page, page 13, starts the slur. So obviously if the student has already played pieces, playing them legato, then that's great. But if the student has less coordination than that, then this is a good time for us to start the idea of playing legato. So before the students are actually playing legato, I think that they should stand up. I'm gonna stand up, you probably won't see my head, but when we have our students stand up, I'd like for them to feel like they go back and forth between their right side and their left side. So they're feeling this transfer of weight. And then you could have them just move so that their foot comes off the floor and then goes back as well and then go back to the swaying. So that is really the feeling of what it's like when they're playing legato. All right, so let's talk about discovery learning. Let's not explain what legato or slur is yet, okay? Let's have the students go ahead and actually play something that's detached, and then something that's connected. Right, so we can easily tell our students, how about you play a key, and then the moment that you play the next key, this finger comes up like that. And the next key that you play, the moment your finger goes down to play the key and you hear the sound, then this finger comes up. Oh, whoa, that was a lovely connected sound. And then you can show the musical symbol of the slur and tell them what you're doing is you're playing smoothly. And the Italian word for that is legato. So I do have a good story. One of my piano pedagogy students, I was telling the class that they, want, they needed to teach legato in a discovery way. So this particular pedagogy student in the afternoon was teaching his beginner and he said to the beginner, I'd like for you to take your index finger and just have it come up your face like this. 
And the pedagogy student asked, is that smooth or bumpy? And the little boy said, oh, that's bumpy. And then the pedagogy student said, take the same index finger and then just move it across your cheek. And he asked the little boy, is that smooth or bumpy? And the little boy said, oh, that's so smooth. And that was the perfect way for that particular student to understand the difference between smooth and bumpy and what does it feel like when something is very smooth. So that is just a great way for them to understand the feeling of moving from one key to the next. So obviously when students are playing legato, they do have to feel this sense of weight transfer, right? So one, two, three, transferring their weight up to their third finger, and this time it's transferring back down to their thumb. So they can do this on any fingers that you'd like them to, three, four, five, five, four, three, and until they get that feeling. So how to play legato, I gave you some really good points up there. Um, I said for the third bullet, walk with your fingers three, four, and five. So we can do this on the fall board, Move your wrist and forearm behind each finger as you play. Right? So this is what weight transfer is. So have them think and look at their forearm as it moves to the camera. And then if they go down, their wrist and their forearm moves towards their body. Let your wrist roll in one smooth motion from one key to the next and listen for no overlapping of notes. So they can look and they can also listen when they actually play this little piece. So you can have them try it with just three notes like this. And since they're so good at playing with that wonderful drip drop roll motion, it's so much easier to play legato then. So drop, have the students roll forward and up, and then drop onto the G, and then roll forward and off the key. And then here again, drop, and then roll forward and out of the keys. <gasps> Did you hear each note connected with the next one? So make sure that your student can really hear the difference between overlapping or detached. And the key is really to have them watch their wrist for a nice smooth motion and also to watch their forearm and their wrist move by transferring their weight. Like that and then dropping and rolling. So you notice Anyone who's been using Succeeding at the Piano from the very beginning has those drip, drop, roll motions down pat, so you don't really have to explain them too much. This is for a transfer student who really hasn't had that information before.